Today I am uh, talking about perspectives in a national freedom movement. In paper one, political science optional, there are two sections. In section B is about in and Indian government and politics. In that, there is a topic, various perspective in national freedom struggle, in which there are liberal, socialist, Dalit, Marxist, radical humanist uh, perspectives are included. I am now going to talk about uh, liberal uh, perspectives. And uh, the basic tenets of liberal perspectives are individual and collective rights, equality, liberty, freedom, and justice. They argue for limited or minimal state in the perspective uh, individual and collective uh, liberty and rights uh, prevail over the uh, state supremacy. The liberal perspective uh, had overarching influence on the national movement in the entire period of the freedom struggle. This can be divided into three major parts. One, 1885 to 1905, and then 1905 to 1920, and then 1920 to 1947. Among the early liberals, Dadabhai Naoroji, Shurendranath Banerjee, M. G. Ranade, Badruddin Tayabji, and Gopal Krishna Gokhale uh, deserve a uh, special mentioning. Later, uh, Bal Gangadhar Tilak and Aravinda Ghosh advocated liberalism though through uh, militant movements. Subsequently, Mahatma Gandhi also followed liberal perspective, particularly when he talked about Saraj or self-rule, Purna Saraj or complete self-rule. His opposition to modern centralized state in favor of Gram Saraj or village self-rule was again an argument for limited state. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar was also liberals in thoughts and ideas. This indicates that liberal thoughts existed both within Congress as well as outside of it. The early liberals adopted a moderate approach and kept the demands limited to the expansion of right, liberty, freedom, justice uh, to the Indian people at par with the British citizens. Uh, among them, Dadabhai Naoroji was a constitutionalist. Based on facts and figures for the first time, he analyzed how the British rule caused draining off of the wealth from India. Srinath Banerjee talked about nationalist consciousness. M. G. Ranade, concept of liberalism was based upon his overall theory of morality. He is known as the father of Indian economics. He felt the need for industrialization process in India and also talked about social reform. Badruddin Taibji was the third Congress president and the first Chief Justice of the Bombay High Court. A harmonious blend of the East and the West in his education made him a strong liberal thinker. Unlike Sayyid Ahmed's concept of two nations, Badruddin Taibji called for united actions by the Indians across the regions on common causes like freedom. Gopal Krishna Gokhal was inspired by liberal thinkers such as Edmund Burke and James John Stuart Mill. He believed in a free society with state's role limited to managing public goods and providing free education. This won't be correct to say that the early liberals were a failure. They rather made some important achievements. Mainly, they contributed in nationalization of Indian politics. Due to their lobbying, some laws either were enacted or amended in favor of Indians. They could connect the Indian causes with liberals in England and elsewhere in Europe. That itself is an achievement. However, too much emphasis on constitutionalism and moderate approach has restrained the early liberals from achieving uh, their objective uh, optimally. It also slowed down the process of independence movement uh, across the country. Because of this, the early liberals remained 
perennially weak and vulnerable in sight. This was, that was one major reason why the influence of the early liberals came to an end when the militant movement led by Tilak, Lajpatrai, Bipin Pal, and also in different way by Aravinda set off opposing the partition of Bengal in 1905. Subsequently, between the years from 1905 to 1920, the liberals' perspective of, uh, uh, in the independence movement manifested in varying forms and exp expressions. The liberals' perspective but failed to take proper shape during this period for several factors. One, of course, was a leadership vacuum, then a political dilemma within Congress, rise of other forces in national movement, and absence of any significant development uh, uh, of the uh, freedom movement between the years 1911 uh, to 1919 and also in between the First World War came. Until therefore Gandhi started the non-cooperation movement in 1920, the liberal thought, you know, uh, progress in a zigzag way but not made any significant breakthrough. Since 1920, the liberal approach in the national movement emerged more prominently and it was no more limited to the movement of the Congress party only. Liberal perspectives were built, then built up uh, by the non-Congress uh, personalities and uh, organizations. Gandhi, of course, remained in the forefront of the liberal movement between 1920 uh, to 1947. For example, uh, in the all-party conference in 1928, Motilal Nehru wrote a draft constitution calling for a democratic republic of India. Dr. B. R. Ambedkar raised a new debate on social justice. He blended the concept of individual rights with collective rights and explained how caste-based identity or origin of birth uh, discriminates people. Meanwhile, the socialist movements also added to liberal thought by demanding for welfare state, great, greater representation of Indians in the decision-making bodies, and so on. As a result, the Government of India Act 1935 made elaborate arrangement for federal form of government across India, including the princely states in the Indian uh, uh, Federation. Yet the reign of control still remained in the hands of the General Governor General uh, of, of India. Uh, of, of India. In meanwhile, the you know the uh, Marxist uh, you know also started mobilizing. Uh, workers and peasants in that even though basically it was you know class angle but you know one may find rights and liberty in those movements also but that may not be very significant in this uh, context. The Quit India movement however in 1942 therefore came as a final blow on the British rule in India. This time Indians declined to accept any form of political ar arrangement except independence which meant complete self-rule or Purna Saraj, certainly again guided by liberal perspective. Thank you. Thank you.